I'm Megan Baker, and this is Influence Her. During National Nurses Week, we wanted to sit down with a woman who is giving her all on the front lines during the current pandemic. Yana Krimik is the VP of the New York State Association of Nurse Anesthetists, or NYSANA. She holds many titles, such as MSN, CRNA, mother and wife. Welcome, Yana. Thank you so much for having me, Megan. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure and we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. The most important question right now, how are you as you work beside others on the front lines during the current pandemic? Well, thank you so much for asking me that question. It has been definitely very challenging times. Um, but as far as our profession goes, I think um, besides being extremely challenging times, it has been really a fascinating time. I think that this unprecedented event really, really defined nurse anesthesia practice. And I am um, right there on the front lines firsthand seeing the amount of unity and compassion and dedication that all healthcare providers, nurses, nurse practitioners, advanced practice nurses, PAs, we all in this together fighting this pandemic. So I am, um, I am doing fine. I am just trying to find the ways how we can um, be helpful every single day and work together as a team with so many different healthcare providers in the front lines. Yana, I think it's important to note that you are, not only are you on the front lines, but you're really in the thick of it, um, where we have you know, a bulk of um, the hospitalizations and the deaths. What has it been like um, with your experience? I, you know, I think the most challenging, I, I ask myself this every day, and the most challenging um, time uh, and a and bunch of different events that I found uh, for myself, and I think many nurses and many um, physicians would agree with me, is to really talk to the patient um, when they are having difficulty breathing, when they are having difficulty understanding what it is is about to happen to them. Um, I've never, as an anesthesia provider, I've never thought about, you know, I've done so many pre-ops, I've done so many preparations for surgeries, but I've never actually thought about just talking to the patient about the part of going to sleep and not knowing when they're going to wake up, not knowing if they're going to wake up. And I think that many healthcare providers will agree with me that that has been the most difficult um, task to bear as, uh, um, as somebody who is there with that patient in the room, trying to ask them, I'm, are you okay with me helping you? And are you okay with understanding that I don't know when you're going to wake up from this? So we have been doing everything possible to have these patients contact their family via FaceTime, mm -hmm. um, via um, some kind of Zooms, uh, communication via their phones, while holding their hand and explaining to them that it's going to be okay. I'm here while I'm putting you to sleep and I'm helping you to breathe and to go forward with this. I'm here to also help you to see your family and in some instances, possibly say goodbye, which is, it, it's, I'm choking up because thinking about it, it has been unbelievably difficult. Taking on that role, um, not only are you there to, to help them um, in the situation that they're in, but as you just said, it's, it's a lot of it is consoling them and being there for them when they can't have family members in the room. Yes, that, that is probably, you know, the, many nurses have shared these stories um, um, on national television that I've seen. Um, on my end, it is for anesthesia providers, it is much harder, I think, because we are responsible for um, comfortably putting them in that deep sleep, comfortably administering those medications that will put them in this medically induced coma, medically induced sleep. Um, and then securing the airway and placing lines and definitely making sure that they are well and, and alive for the portion of um, that sleep. Um, so you try to block that. You try to block that feeling of being scared 
and being unsure and uncertainty of the situation because you're trying to think step by step what would make it better. How can we go forward from here? And how can we make sure that they can, they can survive? Have you always aspired to be a, a CRNA and how did you get to where you are today? Well, I'm an, I'm an immigrant. Um, uh, you know, immigrants have grit in them. They have um, uh, what I call the, <laughs> I call a PDA syndrome. You know, it's a passion, it's a determination and ambition. It's a combination of those three factors that will um, make you a break you potential. You know, you, you, I, I've always knew that I wanted to be something more than just being at the bedside. Uh, in critical care, very early on, I think you realize where your path is going to lead you, you know, by the nature of critical care nursing being, um, being multitasking and making decisions when, um, when uh, those decisions need to be made in emergency situations and how fast we make those decisions. I think early on, I knew that I needed, to, I needed something else. I needed something where I can multitask and make those decisions and being comfortable in critical situations and being calm at the same time. And I think that um, that came pretty much early on in my career um, when I was practicing as a registered nurse back in the Arctic Circle in Siberia. That's where I became a nurse um, for the first time. And I've seen nurse anesthetists back home. Uh, those were the nurses that were very well experienced in critical care. They were seasoned nurses and they were let to go to the operating room and practice anesthesia and that's when i think i knew that that's what i want to do and years down the line when i with immigration and also so many barriers that were put in front of me in terms of being able to practice right away as a registered nurse um you know i had to climb i had to climb that ladder i have to i had to learn english um i had to survive at the same time and and uh, go to college and get all my degrees um, and and eventually uh, when I got to critical care I realized that there is this path that I'd like to take and I took it on. If you were to mentor a young woman or individual um, who wanted to get into this field what is one piece of advice that you would give to them? No, um, confidence be confident and know what you want and don't be afraid to go after what you want believing in yourself and that comes not only um getting in the field it comes for for any woman that wants to advance her career you know people will respond well to those that know for sure what they want mm -hmm. and that's the greatest words of one and only anna wintour and i i if Medicine wouldn't be my passion, and other passion is my is fashion for me. So I, it's, I really um, um, aspire her, and I really she inspires me a lot. So I think believing in yourself and believing of who you are um, is what going to um, make it for you in life. And I think that you need to know what you want. What do you do? And this is really important to de-stress because um, I'm sure it's it's difficult to let go of what is happening around you. So how do you de-stress after a long shift or just, you know, during this pandemic? Oh, I'm a, I'm a huge Peloton junkie. I don't know. If <laughs> I see that. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a huge Peloton junkie. I actually just got on this morning. Um, <laughs> uh, and I think breaking that sweat, you know, breaking that sweat and uh, really getting into class and, um, and Peloton has done such an amazing job with with uh, having classes from home, um, working out, just getting out there, um, taking my dog for a walk. Of course, wine always helps at night. <laughs> That's my go-to. <laughs> yeah. Go-to for many of us right now. But yes, definitely, um, I, I am a strong believer that you need to train your body for any any mental or physical stressful situation and any for any, whatever it's pandemic or any stress that you're facing in everyday life. Let me ask you this. What is one major change you would like to see in the healthcare industry following uh, COVID-19? As I've mentioned earlier, um, for my profession, for nurse anesthetists, um, I think this pandemic most definitely defined our role. Uh, 
we are very, very, we incredibly transformable profession. Mm -hmm. I want to see that recognized. I want to see nurse anesthetists being recognized as advanced practice nurses in New York State. It is well, well, well overdue. And we are due for recognition as an advanced practice nurses and defined scope of practice. There should be no barriers for any advanced practice nurse to practice to their full training, experience, and expertise, especially after this pandemic when I see so many of us on the front lines really jumping in despite the fear, despite um, uncertainty. Mm -hmm. I think this will definitely show the public uh, and show the healthcare, those that make ma major decisions in healthcare, healthcare administration, that advanced practice nurses need to be uh, recognized and let do what we do best, take care of our patients. And then we need to see our state specifically get on board with that, but I guess that's for another discussion. Absolutely, yes. yes. <laughs> so we are um, now entering the next segment, which is called Baker's Dozen. It's 13 rapid fire questions, short answers from you. Are you ready for this? Yes, let's go. We can have some fun. <laughs> so what is your go-to caffeinated beverage? Oh my God, coffee, so addicted. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite course in college? Uh, favorite course in college was, uh, I think, biology. Yes, definitely biology. <laughs> How many estimated surgeries have you worked on throughout your career? Oh, my goodness. Uh, 11 years. Uh, that's a quick math. Uh, thousands, thousands at this point. If you could have any meal this instant, what would it be? Oh, it would be home cooked. Boy, favorite. Love it. Your go-to social media platform? Uh, Facebook. How do you say thank you, health heroes, in Russian? I'm not going to attempt to repeat that, but that was very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Favorite part about wearing scrubs? Oh, comfort. Comfort. In the summertime, I tan. I put my self-tanner on and I tan in scrubs. It's phenomenal. It's comfort. It's wearing pajamas to work. <laughs> what is your snack on the go? Um, apple. I love apple. Longest shift that you've worked? 24 hours. Oh my goodness. Can't even imagine. Okay, the next one, Grey's Anatomy, house or scrubs? Uh, I would say neither. <laughs> <laughs> None of the above? <laughs> yeah, no, none of the above. It's nothing like real life, correct? Nothing like real life. Absolutely nothing. If you could wish for one thing for the world, what would that be? That's a great, that's a great one. Um, humility, dignity. This next question comes from our previous guest. What would you tell your younger self? Fix your crown and then help other women to fix theirs. Don't be afraid. I like that. Yeah. You get the next question. So what would you like to ask our next guest on Influence Her? Um, what are you afraid of in this environment today? What are you afraid of? That is a, a great question. Jana Krimik, Vice President of New York State Association of Nurse Anesthetists, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. I miss seeing you in person, hopefully someday very soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Megan. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.